Bruchim Habaim Ledikduk Dakot. This video is on an overview of the verb stems. As you recall from the previous video, a verb in Hebrew is composed of, at the very least, three things. It's composed of a root, three root letters. It's composed of a binyan, or a stem, which is a series of vocal and visual stem signs added to the root and then a mean or a form of some kind, a prefix or an affix added, a, a mame added to the make a participle, so on and so forth. All of those three things are necessary to create a Hebrew verb. But in this video, we're going to focus on the stem, the verb stem itself. The verb stem communicates two things about the verb about the action. It communicates the type of action, which can be one of these three, simple, intensive, or causative. It also communicates the type of voice, or the voice of verbal action, which can be either active, reflexive, or passive. So just to remind you of what these things mean, or perhaps teach you, a uh, a active voice is just the, the subject of the verb doing the action of the verb. Reflexive is that the subject of the verb both does the action and receives the action of the verb. And the passive voice is that the subject of the verb receives the action. In passive, in, in English, we create the passive voice by adding a form of the verb to be in the, the verb. Uh, simple, intensive, and causative might be best illustrated with an example. So here are our five verb stems. Here are the names of them in each of the place. And we'll write out in a minute uh, the name of each stem in Hebrew. But let's just take the English verb to wash. And we'll conjugate it in the third masculine singular past tense form. And that will illustrate the difference in meaning from simple, intensive, and causative as each verb stem appears on this chart. In general, for Hebrew, the intensive and causative actions are uh, modifications of the simple type of action. So all of these four stems out here, the P, L, He, Feel, Hitz, Pa'al, and Nifal, will be modifications of the Pa'al, which is the dominant, most common stem. So to take the verb to wash in a simple and active, so the subject is doing the action of the verb and the action is simple, you would simply say, he washed. To do that in the Nifal, which is simple but passive, would say, he was washed, right? You see how the subject is receiving the action, he was washed. Putting that in the intensive stem, the PL, he scrubbed. So not just wash, but an intensification of that simple meaning, he didn't wash, he scrubbed. To do that in the heat PL, which is still intensive, but now reflexive, so that the subject does and receives the action, you would say, he scrubbed himself. We often create the reflexive voice in English by adding the reflexive pronoun. And finally, the causative would be, he caused his son to wash, right? So you see how the subject is making someone do something, causing some action to take place. Okay, now I want to write out the verb stems themselves and to give you an indication of the, the, the vocal and the visual sign of each stem. So each stem is based, the name of each stem is based on this paradigmatic root, pe, ein, lamed. And uh, this root means simply to do or to work, and it was chosen for whatever reason years and years ago by grammarians to 
demonstrate the, the sound, the vocal pattern of each name. And so a series of signs and uh, uh, stem signs and vowels are added to each of these stems to produce the unique stem sign. And the sound, so, so the name of each stem actually communicates the vocal pattern and the, uh, uh, the vocal pattern of each stem for the perfect. There's a different pattern for the imperfect and the infinitive and so on and so forth. So the first one for the pa'al, simple active, remember he washed, is simply a comet's patach. This is the third masculine singular perfect form. So now you can see how pe'ain lamid with comets and patach becomes pa'al. That is the most common stem. Another uh, name for it is kal. It's often referred to as kal. 70% of all Hebrew verbs appear in the pa'al or kal stem. Next one is the nifal. Nifal. So the visual sign of the nifal is a noon followed by a hiric on the beginning of the root. The, the, the vocal sign or the vocal pattern is ni a. Ni a. For the pa'al, the vocal pattern is simply a a. A a. Ni a. In the intensive, the pl, we have e a or perhaps e a. In some cases, you have e a. So the vocal sign for the pl is e a or e a. The visual sign of the pl is a hiric under the first root letter or, or and, a dogish forte in the second root letter. Now, the unfortunate thing of the choice of pe ein lamed as the paradigmatic root is that the middle root letter is a guttural, which rejects a dogish. And so the example actually can't communicate the most common and most obvious sign of the PL. So I'll just write an example out for you here. The most common uh, PL word, the most common verb that appears in the PL is diber, diber, he spoke. So you see the EA, this is a dogish lene because it's a begged kefit letter. And this is a dogish forte in the bait because it follows a vowel. So you can see ea, the, the vocal sign. The dogish in the middle root letter is the visual sign. I like to refer to that as dimeral. Dogish in middle root letter. And that works for all verbs stems in the intensive column here. So let's move on to the hitpel. Hitpel is the easiest stem sign to um, notice because it's got this heat on the beginning. Heat a uh, a. It also has the phantom dogish forte in the middle root letter. And it's the intensive and reflexive stem. Um, and so you'll see this heat on the beginning. That's the clear visual sign. Heat as well as a dogish forte in the middle root letter. Those are the visual signs. Vocal pattern, heat a a. Heat a a. Again, this is for the perfect form. Finally, the he feel, which is the causative stem, has two pretty clear signs. The visual sign of the hefeel is a he followed by a hiric and a uh, hiric yod between the second and third root letters. The vocal sign of the hefeel is he e, he e. In some forms, that hiric yod between the second and third root letters is shortened to a tsere. One final comment about this chart, that this chart is a generalization of the meaning of the verb stems. Not every single nifal stem will be passive. Not every single causative will be self-evidently causative. In general, each of the verb stems will 
communicate this kind of meaning, both a causative, let's say, type of action and active voice, but it's not 100% foolproof. The only way to get 100% foolproof is to find the root of the verb, go to the lexicon, go to the verb stem in which that root appears, and read the meaning. Often times, if you have a hyphial, it will be a causative active meaning, but not every kind, not, not every time. So that's really important to keep in mind. The lexicon is your friend. That's it. Lech le shalom.